we've got this major expedition on this island called Wrangell Island, 200 miles from Alaska. But to get there, I have to fly around the world, start out in Moscow, go eight time zones east over here to Pivik. The highs are gonna be about minus 25 Fahrenheit. The lows are only minus 30. He's a wild man. He just loves being out in nature. He has an excitement about the natural world. He carries pictures in his wallet of the different animals he's working on so he can show people when he talks about them. Joel is very high energy. He doesn't think small. He thinks about big problems and how to go about addressing them, oftentimes using real innovative science. We call it burgerology because you really have no idea what's going to come out of his mouth. And somehow, he ties it all together beautifully. Since the early 1970s, Dr. Joel Berger has put his words into action. Born in Los Angeles, Berger has focused on a diverse set of species in the US, Mongolia, the Arctic, and Namibia, where he and his young family found themselves in the early 1990s, researching a severe downturn in rhino populations. Two hours and 10 minutes on the radio. Sounds good. Good luck. Goodbye. Black rhinos were being slaughtered. By the late 1980s, there were maybe 3,500 left. In Namibia, who didn't have the financial resources for anti-poaching patrols, the Namibian government decided to cut off the horns, the idea being, what's a rhino without a horn? There should be no incentive to poach. Because it's a lot easier for the rhino to run right into us. The most important conclusion of his research was the dehorned rhinos were unable to protect their young from the local predators. The population can't increase because the reproductive success plummeted with these dehorned rhinos. That led to a bit of a storm, and we were eventually kicked out of the country. And so we left under this veil, and it was very controversial. Oh, he's ruffle feathers, that's okay making people think, challenging people, making them consider how to do things differently. Pushing people to think differently was certainly most challenging when Berger worked to save a migration corridor for pronghorn antelope in his own backyard. Portions of a 350-mile section of terrain in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park were in danger of being developed for oil and gas exploration. Berger dubbed the area the Path of the Pronghorn, which is now the only protected corridor in the U.S. If the migration corridor was severed, that animal would go extinct in the national park. In 2003, we kicked off a study. We collected over 11,000 data points through the pronghorn's eyes as they were moving through the landscape. And then conservation movements stemmed from that information. If we can do it here, we should be able to do it elsewhere. And that's the cool thing about it. That's what's so cool about this. Since 2007, Berger has traveled some of the most remote and treacherous sections of the Siberian Arctic to study a lesser known animal that is one of the keys to understanding the effects of a changing climate, the musk ox. Well, musk ox are very similar to polar bears in that they are kind of a flagship species for climate change. They're the remnants that live in the Arctic. They live in these group-bonded societies, a bit like elephants. They form a herd and stand tight. And so whether we're asking questions about what led to such unusual behavior or how do we conserve them, it meant we needed to know more about them. After nearly 40 years of research and field study, Berger shows no signs of slowing down. He continues to push the boundaries of what is possible, publishing his findings and always planning his next trip to a remote location. And then you're going with the jacket over in the hood because it's pretty cold. Well, here's a guy who's in his early 60s. You know, most people slow down a bit, but Joel has got so much energy. He's got so much drive. All my friends think that he's really cool when they meet him. He's different than other dads. I'm proud of him. It's inspiring to me to be in wild places, to see animals still roaming as they did 10 and 20,000 years ago. Maybe it's like that peak that people like to climb. They climb it because it's there. I like to do it because the animals are still there. 
I hope other people will want to do it because the animals are still there.